Any system has its own terminology, so let's explore the words used in bullet journaling. A lot of these terms do have their own videos, so make sure to check the description box below for links to those. But the first term we have is bullet journal, and as a noun, this is an analog system for productivity and mindfulness. Or you can use it to describe the notebook that you use to do bullet journaling. Bullet journal can also be used as a verb though, being the process of adding information to a notebook in a way that uses the bullet journal method. The bullet journal method is probably the most complicated term we have on this list, but it is an all-encompassing term which describes what the bullet journal is, how it works, and how to use it. More specifically, it's the combination of the bullet journal system, which is the what or productivity side of bullet journaling, and the bullet journal practice, which is the why or mindfulness side. As said, this one is the most complicated term on the list, and we do have a full separate video that dives into what that actually is. Our next term though is Bujo, and this is a shortened form of the word bullet journal, so taking the first two letters of each word. Normally this is used to describe the noun, or the notebook that you're using, rather than the verb or the action of bullet journaling. Our next term is not a shortened form of the term bullet journal, so please don't use it, or at least if you do, just know that I'm like quietly judging you. A spread is two facing pages in a notebook, whereas a page is half of a spread. Typically we use the term page to describe a singular, one-sided sheet of paper within the spread. A layout, on the other hand, is the way in which elements or parts of a setup have been structured on a page or spread. Typically we use this to describe the structure of a singular collection, for instance a monthly calendar layout, or a future log layout etc. Collections is one of the biggest terms we have in bullet journaling, and these are the layouts that you set up in your journal to hold like information. For example, the future log holds date-specific future events, a shopping list holds things you need to buy, etc. Subcollections are collections that fall underneath, or are related to, a larger collection or topic. For example, the collection could be a particular project, like this video series, and the sub-collections are all of the separate layouts that I've set up for it, such as the project plan, the brainstorm, the progress tracker, etc. Core collections are the collections that make up the foundation of the bullet journal system. They are the index, future log, monthly log, daily log, and more recently, also the weekly log. The index, one of our core bullet journal collections, is set up at the front of your journal. It captures the placement of other collections in your bullet journal by having you record the title of the collection and the number of the pages that they're found on. Another piece of terminology related to the index is that of a dedicated index. This is an index layout that only captures the placement of collections that are related to a specific topic. For instance, they could be work-related collections, home-related collections. Dedicated indexes are used to make navigation of your bullet journal easier, and are specifically to allow you to keep everything in one notebook. A piece of terminology that we don't see used very often, but is related to bullet journaling, is that of instances. This is a continuation of a previously set up collection on a new page or spread. For example, the Instagram tracker that we have here, once it was finished, I could set up a new instance of the Instagram tracker. Another piece of terminology related to bullet journal navigation is that of threading. Threading is a technique used to find the next or prior instance of a collection in your journal. This is done by listing the page number of the next or prior instance next to the page number of the current instance. For instance, the page we're working on here is page 23, but maybe this collection continues on page 45. So we would write the number 45 next to the page number 23. Another one of our core bullet journal collections is the future log. This one is also set up at the front of the journal and is used to record date-specific future tasks and events. The monthly log, another core bullet journal collection, is used to record tasks and events relevant to a specific month. In the original bullet journal method, this is set up to include a timeline on the left-hand page and a task list on the right. Another type of log, the weekly log, is the newest of the core bullet journal collections. This one is used to reflect on the previous week and capture the tasks intended for the upcoming week. The structure of this one is to have a space for the previous week and journaling or reflecting about it on the left-hand page, 
and then on the right hand page, a space for the task list for the week coming. The daily log is the last of our core bullet journal collections, and this one is used as a catch-all space for your bullet journal entries. Information is recorded as concise, bulleted entries using rapid logging. Rapid logging is a term that we will define in a second, but our next piece of terminology is just the word log. While yes, a log is part of a tree, when it comes to bullet journaling, this is a type of collection which is used to record information. But typically that information is recorded as words. For instance, a daily log, a gratitude log, anything where you're writing something out. Another type of collection that is used to record information is that of a tracker. Typically the information in a tracker is recorded by checking off previously specified things. For instance, a habit tracker, a mood tracker, that kind of thing. So a log normally records things in a written format, like the two lines a day layout we have here. And a tracker is one that you have things that you've already specified and you're saying whether they did or didn't happen. For instance, which of the moods were predominant on each day? In reality, the terms tracker and log are used fairly interchangeably, but they are technically different things. Our next piece of terminology is that of custom collections. And these are collection layouts that are designed by the user. These fall outside of the core collections. So for example, a habit tracker, a sleep log, anything that isn't the index, future log, monthly, weekly, or daily log. Another piece of terminology that we don't hear about so often is that of a stack. This is your set or portfolio of collections. This includes both the core and custom collections that you set up and use in your journal. A mental inventory is an activity done prior to setting up a new bullet journal. This helps you get all of your tasks out onto paper. So it's kind of similar to a brain dump, or as I like to call it, a mind unwind. The term is also used to describe the tasks page for a monthly log setup. We mentioned it before, but rapid logging is the process of adding information to your bullet journal as concise bulleted entries, where the bullet represents the type of information captured in that entry. In bullet journaling, the term bullet is used to describe the symbol that represents the different type of entries. The original bullet journal method uses a dot for tasks, a circle for events, and a dash for notes. Along with bullets, we also have signifiers, and these are symbols that are used to add context or meaning to the entries in your bullet journal. These are placed beside the bullet for the entry, typically to the left. An example of this is an asterisk for an important entry. A bullet journal key is the set of bullets, signifiers, or color codes that you typically use in your journal. People sometimes set this up as a custom collection in their journals, especially when they're just starting out. Considering our different types of bullet journal entries, an entry to your bullet journal is any piece of information that you're recording. And our common types of entries are tasks, events, and notes. A task is an entry to your bullet journal, which represents an action to be taken, or that has been taken. These are represented in the original bullet journal system using a dot bullet. Subtasks are smaller tasks that are related to a larger task or project. These are typically written in as an indented list underneath the task or project that they relate to. An event is an entry in your bullet journal which represents an experience that either has happened or has yet to happen. These are represented in the original bullet journal method using a small circle. A note on the other hand is Again, an entry to your bullet journal, but this one represents additional information surrounding something. This can include thoughts, feelings, or supplementary information for a task or event entry. Along with the previously described bullets, we also have custom bullets, and these are the ones that are designed by you to represent different entries into your bullet journal. These are the bullets that are outside of the ones typically used for tasks, events, and notes. So it could be something like a little mail icon for when you need to send an email, a little speech bubble if there's a conversation that you have to have with someone. Or for me, I typically like to record my events as larger circles that I can tick off. And notes I'll often put in with either a triangle or an exclamation point. These are custom bullets because they're outside of the ones prescribed by the original bullet journal method. Another important piece of bullet journal terminology is that of migration. And this is the process of reflecting on your open bullet journal entries using the migration filter and transferring entries to other places. Migration is done on a daily, weekly, monthly, and new journal basis. If a bullet journal entry has been moved to a different place in your journal, then we would say that that entry has been migrated. So for instance, moving it from the monthly log to a daily log. We do have a special type of migrated entry though, and this is for entries that have been moved into the future log during migration. These ones we would call scheduled rather than migrated. Though I just call it migrated, that's fine too. 
Along with our previous pieces of terminology, we also have some that are related to the bullet journal company specifically. These are mainly with regards to some of their offerings, and the first piece of terminology is the bullet journal method, which is a book by Ryder Carroll that describes how to bullet journal, both in terms of the bullet journal system and the bullet journal practice. The Bullet Journal Companion is a phone app offered by the Bullet Journal Company to back up and archive your previous journals, to set reminders to check in with your current journal, and keep on-the-go entries. Bullet Journal Basics and Beyond is an in-depth course offered by the Bullet Journal Company for learning the Bullet Journal method from Ryder Carroll. It's intended for both Bullet Journal beginners and those wanting to deepen their existing practice. Bujo U, on the other hand, is an online community space offered by the Bullet Journal Company for members to connect and discuss bullet journaling, mindfulness, productivity, and more. They offer live events, workshops, guided reflections, and other bonuses. As said, most of those pieces of terminology have their own videos, which are linked in the description box, but most of the terms we looked at are related to collections. We have a separate video about that topic, which is worth checking out, so click or tap on that one, and I'll see you over there.